the use of flywheels allows athletes to accentuate eccentric actions by using inertial kinetic energy that results from the unwinding of the flywheel strap. In other words, eccentric overload is promoted by using the energy stored in the flywheel system after a maximal concentric action when a brief and concentrated braking action occurs at the end of the eccentric phase. This enables large force outputs to be developed at high velocities, which increases the muscular power produced. As a result, flywheel exercises can facilitate post-activation potentiation enhancement, which refers to the enhancement of measures of strength, power and speed following conditioning contractions. In terms of chronic training adaptations, the combination of both concentric and overload eccentric contractions during flywheel exercise has resulted in gains in muscle mass, concentric and eccentric force, changes of direction performance, running speed, as well as injury risk reduction. The article, titled Implementing Flywheel Isoinertial Exercise in Strength Training by Marco and Antonio, provides practical recommendations for prescription of flywheel training. This presentation, brought to you by Talking Sports Science, will provide a summary of their three key recommendations. Recommendation 1. Training Intensity A broad range of inertial intensities can be used to elicit both acute performance improvements and induce chronic adaptations. In terms of flywheel training, inducing a post-activation potentiation enhancement effect. Inertial intensities ranging between 0.029 to 0.11 kg per meter squared are recommended, as they have been found to enhance sport-specific movements such as both vertical and horizontal jumps and change of direction tasks. To induce chronic adaptations from flywheel training, Inertial intensities ranging between 0.05 to 0.11 kg per meter squared are recommended. Selecting higher inertial intensities may be preferable to enhance force, while lower inertial intensities are recommended to develop power. Moving on to recommendation 2, training volume. In terms of providing an acute response, a training volume of two to three sets of flywheel exercises are recommended, as this has been found to induce superior post-activation potentiation enhancement effects compared to a single set protocol. To achieve chronic adaptations from flywheel exercises between three to six sets using a range of six to eight repetitions are recommended. And moving on, to the final recommendation, recommendation three, frequency and duration. From an acute perspective, to optimize the use of flywheel exercise as a post-activation potentiation enhancement protocol, two to three familiarization sessions are recommended. Appropriate familiarization will also provide a solid foundation to optimize chronic adaptations, since specific eccentric strategies are needed when applying braking forces at the desired joint angles and throughout the range of motion to obtain an eccentric overload. In terms of chronic flywheel exercise training protocols, a frequency of two to three sessions per week completed for five to ten weeks appears sufficient for inducing positive adaptations. In addition, there is evidence that early functional and morphological adaptations can be obtained following four weeks of flywheel squat protocols using five sets of 10 repetitions. However, further research is needed to confirm these findings. And that concludes the recommendations for implementing flywheel exercise to enhance both acute and long-term athletic performance. Thanks for listening, folks. See you next time.